you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Good morning, Exchange. Let's give it up for the worship team real quick. What a fantastic job. I'm not going to move around too much for you. Uh, what's going on? My name's Chris. I've got a couple announcements for you guys if you want to say hi to somebody and then take a seat. So if you guys haven't done so already, make sure you check us out on social media, Facebook and Instagram at exchange.windsor. That's where we're posting all of our updates and uh, keeping you guys informed on anything going on in, uh, in the life of Exchange. And you can jump into all of our um, different uh, uh, pr things that we've got going on up there. So um, we've got some prayer and praise cards in the seats um, beside you. So we absolutely love to um, just walk with you guys through anything that's going on, whether you have uh, something that you need some, some prayers for um, or you have something that, uh, you know, God's been working into your life um, that we can just celebrate with you. Uh, yeah, if you can go ahead and, and fill out those prayer and praise cards. Um, and if you're new, if it's your first time, we've got connect cards in those cup holders as well. We would absolutely love to get to know you a little bit better. And you can drop both of those in the uh, offering buckets um, on the way out of church this morning. So um, we're so, so grateful to have such a generous church. Um, if you are prepared this morning uh, with an offering, you can either drop it in the bucket or um, send us an e-transfer to uh, give at ecwindsor.com. First try. Um, <laughs> you can also... Uh, head over to the website as well. For sure. Um, <laughs> uh, but once again, yeah, if you're new, no pressure. Um, but if you call Exchange Home, we're, we're so grateful that you guys continue to partner with us financially um, in this time. Uh, yeah, speaking of, of being grateful, uh, the golf tournament for June 11th is completely full. So thanks so much. We're, yeah, super excited to um, be able to just give um, towards the Goodness Project. And, uh, and already start um, working into that. So thanks so much to everybody who has uh, gone ahead and, and signed up for that. Um, we also have our Love All Serve All for May um, for the can drive. So today is the last day for that. If you guys have anything, you can drop it off um, at the front. And if you forgot to bring it in, no worries. Uh, I would just encourage you to go ahead and um, run down to... Um, uh, one of the centers or shelters and uh, drop off your, your canned goods there. But um, yeah, we're, we're so, so grateful uh, for, your, for your generosity um, in bringing in food and helping out the kids at, uh, at the school. So thanks so much for that, guys. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I've got for today. So let me pray and uh, we'll get back into worship. Lord, thanks that, um, that we can gather here today in your name and uh, and worship you and um, and hear uh, your word. Uh, I pray over Pastor Brad that you would um, just speak through him this morning and and uh, open up um, our hearts and, and our ears, Lord, and allow us to uh, to hear um, the words that uh, yeah that you're trying to speak into our lives, Lord. Um, yeah, I just I thank you for uh, the generosity um, of the church and in uh, everything that we're doing um, and just the continued, um, yeah, giving of time and, um, and money and uh, food and, and energy, Lord. I just pray that, uh, that we would be filled up this morning, Lord, and, and energized um, for the week and, uh, yeah, and that we would just be good examples um, of, of your love, Lord. And uh, in Jesus' name.
a grave that holds nobody, but the power lives in me. There is another in the fire. This is really cheesy, but anyone love good 90s alternative music? There's a song, and I can't get the lyric out of my head, and I'm just trying to be obedient in the, in the moment and, and sensitive at the same time. Um, it goes, you only get what you give. No, let go. You guys know that one. Don't pretend. You're all heathens that listen to the radio. Man, uh, I think there's a part of our, our response in our obedience in moments like this where like God like God only wants to pour out his spirit in this place. I don't know I, I, I don't know how that sits with you but literally all he wants to do is shower his love on you and his grace upon you and his mercy and his justice and all, all of these things all of the characteristics that that he is and yet I, I still believe that there's something that you only get what you yeah, I know it's not great theology, <laughs> but it's just like, man, I know the Bible says that when we draw close to him, he draws close to us. So if I can, like, I'll go there because that, that, that makes sense. Um, but, man, we're going to sing one more song. And how about this? Whether you know the lyrics or you don't know the lyrics, could you just in your heart of hearts right now even just make a decision to say, God, I'm just going to worship you in this moment. Whether that's hands raised high, whether that's just quietly just letting us sing this song over you, whatever it is. Come on, I don't want you to miss it, because when we draw close to him, he draws close to us. Don't let go. Come on, let's just go a little deeper this morning. Who am I you should know me, God? Oh 
We praise your name in this place. We worship you, God. Yeah, I, I just pray in this moment, God, that our passion for you it would not grow dim, that we would not grow comfortable, that we would not just go through the motions on a Sunday morning and maybe feel like we're doing our due diligence just by being here, God, but again, that you would ignite a passion within us for your word, for your son for the things that you've called us to as your sons and daughters, and that by your grace, by your spirit, God, you would have your way in our lives. God, you would reignite us. You would reawaken us in Jesus' name. We say, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead. Wake up, sleeper. Wake up, wake up, wake up. 
you to do something in us even now, Holy Spirit. And so God, I just pray as your word comes forth, because it, we know that it's your word that changes us. It's your word that gives us life. And so I just pray in these next few minutes that we would lean in. Again, we would hear what you want to say, Holy Spirit. And you would have your way as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give them a shout of praise. Come on. Oh, man. Well, that was so, so good. And I, I don't know. Man, I just, you know, I hope our people, I hope our people actually get what it is. Such a privilege for us to be invited to walk with God. You know, when you, you were just singing that, you know, <laughs> he invites us to walk with him. And I hope you, all got, you, got, you guys know that he's, he's with us, right? You guys know that, right? You know, there's a promise that he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Some of you know that. He never will. He never will. But we forget it. Don't we? Like, I forget it. Or maybe I'm not as aware as I need to be of it. Thanks, bud. And, you know, I just I was thinking about that. You know, there's another in the fire standing next to me. He's with me. He's with you. you got, hey, got any fire you're going through? Come on. Hey, man, it's church now. Come on. Anybody feeling wind over their head like waters, right? Yeah. Yeah. There are days, let me tell you. But he's with us, you know, and, and maybe the, the question for us, and I, I love this because some of you are going, man, you know, Pastor, you're talking about the Holy Spirit and his ministry, you know, when we gather together in his name, two or more. I mean, what does he do? I mean, he reminds us because we need reminding that there's another in the fire standing next to me. And there's another in the waters. Come on. Holding back the seat. And sometimes the question isn't so much whether we know that he is with us. The question of his reality and being reminded of this is actually answering the question, am I with him? Because it's whether I'm with him that I actually know that he's with me. Because this is not about religion. Exchange church, we've exchanged religion for relationship. And so the question, you just need to turn somebody and just ask them, hey, are you with Jesus? Are you with Jesus? Are you with Jesus? Just go ahead. Are you with Jesus? Yeah, I'm with Jesus. So, so good that I get to be back two weeks in a row, and I'm so excited. You guys, you came back. You came back. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, I feel pretty good, bud. I'm not sure there's as many that came back, but they came back. You guys came back, and I'm grateful. Week two of this mini-series that we're doing in a larger series called To All the Ladies in the Place. We've been there in, in May, To All the Ladies in the Place. To so all the ladies in the place. That includes all the guys in their caves. Okay? I just want to say that. Because this is not this is not a battle of the sexes. This is about us being better of the sexes, okay? Because we need each other in order to be the best we can be. Because God made them male and female, both in his image. Why? So we could reflect his image together. Not a battle of the sexes, the betterment of the sexes. And all the ladies said, okay. And all the guys grunted. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we're in this series and, you know, uh, this mini-series within a series. And I, I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer. And you came back. Maybe not the coolest or, you know, neatest kind of subject. But I, I wanted to talk to you about prayer because this guy got me thinking about it. Back in Easter, some of you were here Easter. We packed out two services. Remember that? And what was so cool is that Pastor Drew challenged every single one of us, wherever we're at on our spiritual journey, to be like Mary, to all the ladies in the place. 
and head to the empty tomb and experience Jesus speaking your name. Let him speak your name. And then after you hear him speak your name, which is, again, him just letting you know he's back, he's alive, for you, that's what brought him back, that you would just do what he would tell you to do, just like Mary did. That's all she did. She ran to the tomb, heard him speak her name, and then just did what Jesus told her to do which was go and tell my disciples. You know, we're all here because Mary did something that Jesus told her to do. And the people that you're going to impact for the kingdom are going to be here one day because you're going to experience Jesus calling your name and you do what he's calling you to do. Yeah, okay, I got, okay, I got, I got a, one brother, I got, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 we got, come on, come on, let's go. You can say, ride that bus. I think we haven't said that in a long time. Go ahead, ride that bus. I don't know what that means, but it sounds, you know, yeah, whatever the bus is. Ride it. Right? And so I did, and so I went to the tomb and encouraged you guys to do the same. And, you know, there, what, what did we hear there? What did I hear there? I heard him speak my name with such personal familiarity, intimacy. And that's scary because then I go, okay, What's Jesus going to tell me to do? You know what he told me to do? (laughs) I told you last week. He told me, I I want to teach you how to pray. And I kind of said, well, Jesus, you know, I was looking for something a little more, like, non-basic. You know, I've been at this for a while as a pastor. Not not to say that I can't learn how to pray better, but he encouraged me to forget everything that I had learned about prayer. And for the next 40 days, follow him up to Ascension Day, which was, was this past Thursday. And just lean in and allow him to teach me how to pray like him. There was a difference. Because I could pray, but if you say, Pastor Brad, you pray like Jesus? I go, oh, let me think about that. Get back to you. And so last week I was encouraging you. Man, do that. Lean into that. Because I'm leaning into that. And if I could just share a little bit about how Jesus is teaching me how to pray, how to pray like him, maybe, maybe maybe there's something that you could learn too. And last week, if you weren't here, how many of you were here last week and you actually came back? Yes. Okay, actually, more than three, but I'm, yeah, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged. That's good. That's growth for me. That's good. And, you know, I, I, I spoke about Jesus just saying, listen, if you want to learn how to pray like me, Brad, You need to start by having faith in God. Just have faith in God. Pretty simple. Turn to somebody next to you and just go, hey, have faith in God. Just have some faith in God. That's that's where we start to learn how to pray like Jesus because that's what he did. And, And praying like Jesus, praying like Jesus, having faith in God means this, is that we want God and we want nothing else and nothing more. Okay, now now listen, gang, you, you on your own strength can't trust Jesus and trust God like that. You can't, I can't want God and want nothing else and nothing more. I can't do that on my own. How many of you know you can't do that on your own? But that is a gift of faith where we allow the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that taught Jesus how to pray, He teaches us how to pray, and it starts with having faith in God, wanting Him and nothing else, and nothing more. Because when we get that, then, 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 we understand that prayer, prayer gang, and you might, if you're taking notes, you got to write this down, because I didn't give this to you last week, but you might want to get your phones, tablets ready, because we're going to go back to Mark chapter 11 in a second. But this is it. This is the truth from last week. Can I just give it to you? For those of you that weren't around, long weekend, we know, we know what what you're up to. Simply this is that prayer is not a button to be pushed to get what we want. Prayer is a relationship to be pursued so we get him. Because when you get him, you got everything you want whether you know it or not. And Jesus is absolutely passionate about this gang. He's going to the cross when he's teaching his followers this in Mark chapter 11. And on the way to Jerusalem, the first day, 
He's going to Jerusalem. He sees a fig tree because he's hungry. Mm, Jesus is hungry. You got to take him that way. He's 100% human. He got hungry. And he's looking for fruit. But there is no fruit because there's no faith. It just looks good in season, gang. It just puts on the act that it's faithful. But there's no fruit. You can tell you're faithful and trust in God when there's fruit in your life. And if there's no fruit, then you got no faith. Not the way Jesus is calling you. So do a fruit check. Inventory. How's your fruit this day, these, you know, these days? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, jealous, faithfulness, self-control. This is the fruit Jesus is hungry for. Guess what our kids are learning? Fruit of the Spirit. Why? Because we want to teach them that fruit is a byproduct of faith in Jesus. And so Jesus curses this fig tree, and then he goes to the temple. Because it's pure passion. You see, Jesus is still cursing things today, and he's still turning over tables. That's how you know. It's how you know you have faith, because you, you do the things he does. You curse the things he curses, and you overturn the things he overturns. Because we're his hands and feet, gang. So when's the last time you overturned something? When's the last time you got a little passionate, fired up about something? Listen, if there's one thing the church and our world needs after two years of a global pandemic, it's passion. Because that seems to have sucked all of it out of us. You can tell your trust in God when you're passionate for his thing. So he turns over to the tables, he does this, and man, and then he, he takes his disciples back into, I love this, back into Jerusalem the next day. Heading back, and Pete, I love Pete. Pete goes, hey, Rabbi, <laughs> something happened. And I want to take you right back where I want to actually pick up in Mark chapter 11. If you have it, it's going to come up on your screens. Uh, warning, Pastor Brad's version, okay? So don't look for this in the Greek. Just look for it in the geek. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Hey, that was bad, eh? Was that bad? Was that okay? Yeah. You can edit that, whoever does her, yeah. So this is Mark chapter 11. Rabbi, which means Professor Jesus, Dr. Jesus. This is Peter talking to Jesus. Hey, check it out, Rabbi. The fig tree you cursed yesterday is firewood today. How'd you do that? And Jesus answered, want the Father and want nothing else and nothing more. If you want the merrily, merrily of life, you got to grab a hold of the verily, verily, Jesus said. Because you can't have the merrily of answered prayer without the verily of this truth. You see this mountain that stands in the way of my big kingdom coming and your small kingdom of self going? You tell it to move and it'll move. But, big but. You need to say it, believe it, and receive it. Therefore, verily, verily, truthfully, truthfully, honestly, honestly, this is Jesus, the greatest world teacher, teaching you this. I tell you, whatever you ask or say in prayer, believe you've received it, and womp, there it is. Womp, there it is. What was that, buddy? What you, is that 90s alternative? What is that, buddy? No, that, that's, keep going? Thanks, man. I don't even know what I'm saying here, but it was in the Greek. Josiah, it was in the Greek, believe me. And when you're doing life with other followers and the forgiver reminds you of any offense or unforgiveness that you're nursing, don't be frozen, but let it go, let it go. Okay, okay, so you guys know that one. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. Let it go and you'll get back to your mountain moving kind of life, the kind of life that makes me want to come back right here, right now. And this is what Jesus says. Brad, you want to be the kind of person that moves mountains. You learn to pray the way I prayed. I got three things really quick. Somebody says three things. I got three things really quick. So first of all, you pray 
like Jesus when there's a mountain. Hey, gang, you know, mountains aren't bad because they remind us that we're dependent upon him. Amen? You got any mountains in your life right now? Come on. That's your opportunity to learn how to pray like Jesus. So don't despise the mountain. Embrace it. Wanting your father and wanting nothing more, nothing else. You know, Jesus always answers prayer, right? Okay, you know he does. Okay, according to Jesus, not always the way we want, or not always the way in the time we want. Sometimes he answers go. He says, yeah, yes, absolutely. I can say yes to that. Sometimes he says no. Remember? Remember Jesus in the garden? God, take this cup. He doesn't even ask. God, take this. Father, take this cup. Take this cup from me. But not my will. Yours be done. So the father says, no, he answers prayer. Okay, listen, he always answers prayer. Sometimes he says go. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he answers slow. Slow down here. Hold on, hold on. I got some other hills in front of you that you need before you get this mountain. Because I need to do some of the work in you first. And then sometimes he answers grow. Because that mountain actually put there, if he takes it away right like that, you get ripped off of the chance to grow in one of the fruits of the Spirit. Patience. Perseverance. Long-suffering. So over these past 40 days, I've experienced the mountains, and I've experienced these answers to prayer. Mountains have been moved or are being moved, and some still have to be climbed over. Can I just give you some of them that I've just journaled in my own journal over the past 40 days? So Dom's estranged son came back home after praying for years. Brandy's diagnosis after years of physical challenges. Bryce's friend Jordan healing and Bryce opening up to Jesus for the very first time. Greg's family unified as a unified front on how to care for his ailing mom. Skyler caught his first walleye right after Miss Nettie prayed in the boat next to him. Gracie, who's here today, who he prayed for is getting better, and her grandma, who is in a hospital, is out, and she's back here this morning. But Lisa's challenge to help us help the homeless and hungry in Windsor through our all, Love All Serve All. 90s, uh, Nettie's 94-year-old mom fell twice and miraculously didn't break anything. Deeper relationship with our OBF family as we work out all the legal stuff of becoming Exchange LaSalle. Carol's successful bone marrow transplant. Jalen's 10 G's for school. Let's go! Our Mary Jane got a date for her surgery. We added strong people to our kids' men team for the sake of the next generation. Merritt called his grandpa, who he hadn't talked to in over a year. Amber didn't go through with her abortion. And Kim and Vince saw their marriage restored. Yeah, you got mountains. You got some mountains. You, you see what Jesus is saying is prayer changes some things. But you know what prayer actually changes all the time? It changes us. So we can become the kind of mountain moving people that he wants us to be. So we can pray these big, bold prayers. We're still praying for injustices and mountains and needed provision. We're praying for Uvalde 
and the senseless gun violence in our world and wars in our world that have created 70 million people on the run, refugees. You see, there's a scripture that Paul says now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. He's still doing that, gang. He's still doing immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. See, I don't want us, anyone here at Exchange Church, to get to heaven and Jesus is, you're going to say, hey, Jesus, why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do this? And why didn't you, why didn't you give me this? And, and Jesus is going to say, you have not because you ask not. So, gang, ask away because it gives you an opportunity to get to know him. Second thing, you pray when you say. You pray when you say. Not only do you pray like Jesus when you see a mountain, but you pray like Jesus when you say. Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray. And he begins by saying, say, our Father. You see, because what comes out of your mouth actually has some power, has some impact. There's power in your words. Because out of your mouth, the overflow of your heart speaks. And so what are you speaking? What are you talking to the Father about? And what if you and I were to pray without ceasing? What if his words in these mountains and our needs kept coming out of him? Because here's what I know about you, even though I might not know about you, and I haven't had a coffee with you, heard your story. This is what I know. You probably, when you hear the word prayer, you probably have prayed it sometime in your life. It's either a four-letter prayer or it's a six-letter prayer. It's either help. Oh, God, help. Help me, God. Help me out of this situation. Help me with that husband. Help me with those kids. Help me, help me with my job. Help. Help. It's fire extinguisher prayers. That's right. So we get in over our heads. Help. And then sometimes it's a six-letter prayer. Thanks. Thanks, God. Thanks for getting me in out of my head, over my head, you know. Thanks for hearing my prayers. Thanks. But here's what I know about you. Probably is when it comes to prayer, you probably feel guilty a little bit because you're not sure you're doing enough of it and you're not sure you're doing it right. Right? And you know the reason I know that? <laughs> That's me. That's Pastor Drew. Because we wonder about that. But Jesus says, when you pray, say, I got my glasses. Did I bring my glasses? I think maybe I left them here. Let me just, Pastor Brad, like, has faith. He just needs still glasses, right? Yeah. This is one of my favorite stories about prayer and saying prayer. One of my favorite adventures in prayer involves Doug Coe, who has a ministry in Washington, D.C. that mostly involves people in politics and statecraft. Doug became acquainted with Bob, an insurance salesman who is completely unconnected with any government circles. Bob became a Christian and began to meet with Doug so Doug could learn about his newfound faith. One day, Bob came in all excited about a statement in the Bible where Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, move, it'll move. If you don't doubt in your heart and believe. Is that really true, Bob demanded? And Doug explained, well, it's not a blank check. You have to take it into the context of the teaching of the whole of Scripture on prayer. But yes, it's really true. Jesus does answer prayer. Great, Bob said. Then I got to start praying for something. I think I'll start praying for Africa kind of a broad target. Why don't you narrow it down to one country? Doug advised. All right, I'll pray for Kenya. Do you know anybody in Kenya, Doug asked? No. Have you ever been to Kenya? No. Bob just wanted to pray for Kenya. So Doug made an unusual arrangement. He challenged Bob to pray every day for six months for Kenya. And if Bob would do that and nothing extraordinarily happened, Doug would pay him $500. But if something remarkable did happen, Bob would pay Doug $500. And if Bob did not pray every day, the whole deal was off. It was a pretty unusual prayer program, but then Doug was a pretty creative guy. So Bob began to pray. And for a long while, a long while, somebody say long while, long while, nothing happened. And then one night he was at dinner in Washington, 
The people around the table explained what they did for a living. One woman said she helped run an orphanage in Kenya, the largest of its kind. Bob saw $500 suddenly sprout wings and begin to fly away. But he could not keep quiet. Bob roared to life. He, had, he hadn't said much up until this point, and now he pounded her relentlessly with question after question. You're obviously interested in my country, the woman said to Bob, overwhelming, overwhelmed by his sudden barrage of questions. You've been to Kenya before? <laughs> no. You know someone in Kenya? No. Then how do you know? And how do you happen to be so curious about Kenya? Well, someone is kind of paying me $500 to pray for Kenya. She asked Bob if he'd like to come and visit Kenya and tour the orphanage. Bob was so eager to go, he, he would have left that very night if he could have. When Bob arrived in Kenya, he was appalled by the poverty and the lack of basic health care. And upon returning to Washington, he couldn't get this place out of his mind. He began to write large pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies describing to them the vast need that he had seen. He reminded them that every year they would throw away large amounts of medical supplies that went unsold. Why not send them to this place in Kenya, he asked. And some of them did. This orphanage received more than a million dollars worth of medical supplies. The woman called Bob up and said, Bob, this is amazing. We've had the most phenomenal gifts because of the letters you wrote. We would like to fly you back over here and have a big party. Will you come? So Bob flew back to Kenya, and while he was there, the president of Kenya came to the celebration because it was the largest orphanage in the country and offered to take Bob on a tour of Nairobi, the capital city. And in the course of the tour, they saw a prison. Bob asked about the group of prisoners there. They're political prisoners, he, he was told. That's a bad idea, Bob said brightly. You should let them out. Bob finished the tour and flew back home. Sometime later, Bob received a phone call from the State Department of the United States government. Is this Bob? Yes. Were you recently in Kenya? Yes. Did you make any statements to the president about political prisoners? Yes. What did you say? I told him he should let them out. The State Department official explained that the department had been working for years to get the release of these prisoners, but to no avail. Normal diplomatic channels and political maneuverings had left a, left, led to a dead end. But now, the prisoners had been released, and the State Department was told it had largely been because of Bob. So the government was calling to say thanks. Several months later, the president of Kenya made a phone call to Bob. He was going to rearrange his government and select a new cabinet. Would Bob be willing to fly over and pray for him three days while he worked on this very important task? So Bob, who was not politically connected at all, boarded a plane once more and flew back to Kenya where he prayed and asked God to give wisdom to the leader of the nation as he selected his government. And all this happened because Bob took Jesus up on his words and promise. Hey, so just invitation here. Would love to have you all join me in Pastor Drew. <laughs> I'm implicating him, I shouldn't, but, but me to pray for a mountain for the next six months, okay, every day. Now, I'm not going to pay you 500 bucks, okay? <laughs> you're, you're not, and you're not going to pay you five, right? 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 But here, here's the thing. Okay? If, if something happens in the six, month, six months, what you actually are praying for, a mountain to be moved, you can take it out for coffee or a Starbucks, buddy. Right? Vanilla frap, Okay. And if nothing happens, we will. Because this is the reality. Jesus is calling us. And when you face a mountain, you can say to it, move. You can actually push. Come on. Push the mountain. Push up against it. Why? Because when you and I push against them, push stands for pray until something happens. And I wonder how many of you have a mountain that you'd want to see pushed. Here's the last thing. You want to pray like Jesus, have faith in God. You, you need to embrace your mountain. 
when you see a mountain, pray. First thing, when you see a mountain, speak to the mountain. Say something like Jesus did. Right? To the fig tree, overturn something maybe. Allow this mountain and what you say form you. And then lastly, pray in community, okay? Because Jesus was in community. And how do I know Jesus was praying in community? Because he taught. You get agreement, right? Two or more of you on earth, touching anything. Agree? You agree? Come on. And then Jesus goes, man, it'll be done. So just agree. Just agree in that. Pretty, pretty cool. And I can tell you why Jesus was telling us we need to pray in communities because <laughs> he says, and if you stand there praying and God reminds you that you are offended or you're carrying a grudge against somebody, you need to forgive them. Because you know what gets in the way of mountain moving prayer? Unforgiveness. You know, you owe me. You wronged me. And Jesus goes, man, I don't want anything to get in the way of this. I'm jealous for that. So continue to forgive. <laughs> Andy's reading a book called uh, Help I Work With People, right? And I think it's because she works with, you know, <laughs> me and Drew, right? God help, because she has to forgive us a lot, eh? And you can tell you're engaged with people if they can hurt you. If you're not close enough, gang, if you put a wall up, protection. See, the problem is, is that when you protect yourself from somebody who wronged you, you're protecting yourself from everybody. People go, oh, no. No, no. Because this wall of unforgiveness blocks our relationship with God, which becomes the overflow to all of them. And I, man, how, how do we wrap this service up? Would you be willing to join us six month prayer challenge to learn how to pray like Jesus? Just pray, just pray for that mountain. Six months, if nothing happens, we'll take you out for something. If something does happen, you gotta take us out just to hear, hear your story about what God does. Yeah, okay, good. I got, I got, yeah, I got a couple of commitments. That's good. And I, oh man, I love praying in community. I love praying with our staff, Pastor Drew. Our team on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whenever we get together. I love, love praying with a group of pastors every Thursday. I, I, lo I love praying with my honey. It's good. Guys, pray with your wives, please. Man, pray with your kids. How do they learn how to pray? Somebody got to teach them. Don't leave it all on mom, okay? Grandma's. They're, they're cool. They step up. But, uh, man, I love praying with our dream team. And we're led. I, I'm blessed these days because I get to get prayed over every single Wednesday by the person who leads our prayer team, our dream team, Nola Millen. It's all, some of you know her. And so uh, I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if Nola would just pray over us? And um, she's going to do that in a cool way. Um, she's got a pretty cool uh, voice modulator. Lets her communicate uh, with us. Every single Wednesday night, she comes prepped. And she prints out a prayer that somebody on her behalf reads over us. Somebody on the prayer team. And uh, today... She wanted at you. She wanted to pray herself. She didn't need her pastor to read any prayer over her. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to ask you just to sit in this moment and receive it. Okay? And if Jesus has said anything to you today, man, maybe it's your chance to say something to him and respond. But Nola, would you pray over us, lady? Thank you. Good morning. Let's bow for prayer. 
dear Father. Thank you for this Bible school week to come to me. Thank you for giving me the technology to be able to lead the prayer team and have the ability to lead and change family in this moment of prayer. Thank you for this day to be together as a church family. We believe in you and know that your word is true. Father, in Mark 11, verse 23, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Help each one of us to have the faith to not doubt you. Forgive us when we let our humanness to get in the way of believing and trusting you. I pray for each and every mountain people are facing. We don't put limitations on the size of the mountain. We just tell us to trust you and not to doubt. Father, I'm claiming your promise in Mark 11, 23, over each person who is hearing my voice. Who will our mountain go to the sea, or in our case, the Detroit River? Give us the faith to know with confidence that our mountains are gone mm -hmm. and to be certain that with you all things are possible mm -hmm. if it's in accordance to your will. I know you will pass each and every mountain, big or small, physical, financial, spiritual, or any other tie into the sea. I know you will do this because you said you would. The only stipulation you give is that we need to believe without doubting. Please take away any doubt we may have. Let our trust be only in you and not in the circumstances of this world. Thank you for being our mighty mountain mover. In the precious and all-powerful name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, I want you all to go from this place filled with faith, trusting and wanting the Father more than anything else. Amen? Amen. 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 And just do what he says. Do what he says. Deal? Yeah. All right. See you next week, everybody. Thanks for coming.